Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate CA App Experience Analytics. I'm going to do this by telling a story, and I'm going to start off uh, with the end user. So as an end user, uh, we are looking to purchase tickets for the latest uh, concert that's coming out. This is a fake scenario, obviously, but it can apply to anything that an end user is looking uh, to purchase as far as uh, goods, products, or services from our customers. Now, the customer has uh, many different choices of how to access these goods and services. Uh, one might be uh, the traditional web interface, so being able to go to a particular website and look up these tickets for the concert and purchase the tickets. Uh, another interface uh, may be uh, wanting to use the um, mobile application that is provided. Uh, most folks have a, a mobile presence as well, and a lot of more and more users are using that uh, mobile presence and the mobile applications to purchase goods and services. So I have the same ticket change application uh, on the Android device as well as the iOS device. Let's go ahead and use the iOS device. All right, first thing is uh, I load, I see um, the welcome screen and how snappy the application actually loads. Don't take that for granted. Uh, the period of time just getting to the home screen is very, very important. It's the you know first user experience. Now I'm on the home screen. Uh, these mobile apps do not come with any user instructions. So as a user, I'm kind of clicking. looks like a concert, something I want to go to, something fun. Nothing's happening. Oh, I look down. Uh, sure enough, I see concerts here. In this demo, you'll see how those clicks are actually captured so I understand the uh, user experience. I see the uh, famous John Elton concert that I want to attend, so I click here. And now I see a spinny dial. Well, what is this? Well, in terms, it's called the spinny dial of bad reviews. If that thing takes more than a few seconds, uh, then you're going to get bad reviews. Uh, that one actually took a little bit longer than expected, and I'll show you how we troubleshoot that and how that's apparent uh, in App Experience Analytics. Now here we go in here, I see uh, the available tickets. The that was actually a server call behind the scenes, so it was requesting the information dynamically. Of course, I'm going to get the available tickets or, that are the closest. All right, I'm going to see if I can get a friend to go with me. And so, actually, I have two daughters. They probably would love to see. No, they wouldn't, but uh, we'll act like they did. So, we're going to confirm a purchase of three. Okay, great. I understand that I need to log in to complete the transaction. Oh, well, that's called the application crash of lost customers. I actually had something in my shopping cart. I was trying to purchase tickets and the application crashed. That's a very bad scenario. And I'll show you that experience that's captured as well from an app experience analytics perspective. All right, let's switch over now to the actual interface. This is the console for CA app experience analytics. And you start out at a very high level. You see um, all of your applications displayed. Uh, we see information for the last uh, seven days. And uh, we see problematic apps. Well, that ticket change application uh, is red because it's had a number of crashes. So that's key for me. Uh, you could also sort by you know, apps that take the longest from a latency perspective. Uh, you also see just generally where those users are throughout the world. Uh, where they're accessing uh, the application. And then you'll see uh, down at the bottom if there's any um, problems that appear to be happening. We do some predictive analytics looking at the numbers to say are they trending in the right or wrong direction. If they're trending in the wrong direction we'll actually make that very apparent uh, for the uh, operations person. So to start off let's say we're the operations folks that are responsible for making sure this application is up and live. We've got a notification that there's some issues with ticket change. So in one click, now all these analytics um, are focused on just this one application. I've seen in my number of sessions, um, I have the ability to go straight into uh, flagged sessions. So I see that um, something happened, something crashed. I can click in another click deep. I actually see individual sessions that are problematic. Uh, I can see the screenshots. I can see the status of the hardware, uh, for example, the CPU. I can see every single event that took place. Uh, I can actually re replay a video of that actual interaction. Uh, here's when I went into the application. Uh, we see the magic uh, green dot of where I'm actually clicking on the screen over and over. So that's all that's captured. Now, as an operations person, I'm probably concerned about 
the slowness or that, uh, you know, the back end call, which was shop view products to return the tickets, it was slow. I have control of those systems. If they're not performing correctly, um, that's, that's an operations issue. I see here that uh, this, although it was successful, um, it was slow. It was actually almost five total seconds. Let me click one layer deeper. In here, I see that the um, transaction started at an offset of 38 seconds. Um, a view appeared. Uh, we saw the events. And then all of a sudden, it looks like um, over four seconds, almost five seconds was spent when this call was made. And this was the actual arrest call to return the available ticket. So I know something is going on there. And the slowness for this transaction was related to this one call. At this point, I have the ability to now drill in even deeper. Uh, I'm linking straight into uh, Application Performance Management Team Center. So all of the integration, uh, the monitoring of from via the Interscope agent of this application uh, is at my fingertips. You see that I'm brought in to a filtered view uh, for that specific time period that that transaction took place. Uh, and it's filtered by that individual transaction. I'm going to pick a perspective that makes sense to me. Uh, on the left hand side, you actually see the start or the orientation, uh, the origination of that call, which was uh, the shop view products call. We know it was from a iOS 9 device that that call took place. I'm all green on the mobile side, uh, so it's not a problem with the front end application. But when I drill into the actual back end systems, the architecture, I see that it turned red in this area. In fact, I see uh, that there's an issue with this uh, web server. I'm going to drill in deeper using the blame point metrics. At this point, now I'm switched into a very, very granular level. So you saw we started out very high level that there was a impact in the overall end user experience. We were able to see that. Uh, and now as I click in, I can actually, in just a few clicks, determine exactly uh, where the problem is from an infrastructure or application perspective. One level deeper, we're brought in here to APM web view, and we can now actually go down and look at the individual transactions. So this is pretty cool. We can get down at a very granular level. I can click on the traces tab that have been automatically enabled because of the slow performing application. Here, looking at the individual trace of that session, we're actually able to go ahead and go down and sort by call time. And we see that this specific method on this specific web server is causing basically 100% of the overall call time. So improvements in this method will greatly improve the end user experience uh, that was um, noticed by the end user in that spinny dial of bad reviews. All right, to go back into the CA App Experience Analytics product, operations folks are obviously very concerned also about performance. And so there's a whole tab here dedicated to a number of different uh, performance related metrics such as startup of the application, average latency of calls. We can get down and look at the individual uh, URLs or REST calls um, that are made by the product. We can rank them by um, latency. We can rank them by issues or failures or uh, go in here and look at the different uh, errors individually. Uh, we can uh, do a ton of different uh, slicing and dicing of the data uh, from a performance perspective. Now we also saw the application crash and typically application crashes uh, you need to get the developer involved. So we want to show you that App Experience Analytics has everything that the developer needs uh, in order to figure out what's taking place. This tab is dedicated towards these uh, app crashes or errors inside of the application. Here we have the ability to uh, let the developer know you know, who's impacted by these crashes? How often are these crashes taking place? Uh, on which types of platforms or which types of device or which type of carrier? Sometimes it can just be a specific carrier or slowness in a specific carrier, or it could be the latest operating system release that came out that is causing all of the crashes. But it provides um, a breadcrumb trail of exactly uh, what's taking place. Now, obviously the developer also has access to the same things that I was just showing you, the individual sessions uh, where we can go in and look at a replay of where the user was. Maybe they're clicking in a strange place. I mean, users, they'll do the craziest things, right? Uh, so understanding what led up to the crash, uh, understanding where geographically they were located, 
how long they were spending. Now, the developer really, they want this information. They want to be able to take and get to the uh, stack trace and just export that because that, you know, tells them exactly where in the code um, the application crashed so they know where to focus uh, their energy. The developers have all they need. They have the stack trace. They have an understanding of the individual errors that are taking place on which type of devices uh, and the layout of the users that are being impacted. So very, very valuable to the, uh, the end developer. Now from a usage perspective, the actual application owner, uh, they get reports from the different stores to say these are the number of people that have downloaded the application, um, but they don't truly understand the usage uh, without having analytics built into their product. Here we see that we can track the actual users, uh, whether they're new users or uh, existing users. Uh, we can see uh, the breakout of the users depending on platform, based on specific carriers, uh, geographically where those uh, folks are located that are accessing the sessions. We can see the session length time, so understanding um, how long they're spending in the application itself. Uh, we can see the retention. This is key. You know, we want to be able to have our customers provide applications that add value to customers. Um, if they're not adding value, they're not going to re be returning to the application. So you know, for example, here on July 13th, uh, 57 people uh, initiated, uh, started the application. And of those 57, how many returned on day two, day three, day four? Understanding uh, the retention uh, is very, very important. Now getting in even a layer deeper, uh, this is really cool. We get into the actual flows and how people are using the application. Uh, here, we actually can go in and show you all the screens of the application, whether it's iOS, Android, or web. And we can show you, uh, for example, which screens uh, have specific problems. Maybe which screens are used the most or, or the least. Uh, for example, here, if you have, you know, down here, if your screen that's very, very important, you just spent a bunch of time developing, is down here at the bottom and it's, you know, light green or not even green at all. People aren't getting to it. The usage isn't there. That's going to tell you you need to redesign the application to make it easier to get to that content, easier to get to that screen. Going even a layer deeper, let's look at a specific screen. Remember when I was clicking repeatedly on the screen? This actually shows you the heat map of where people are clicking on individual screens. Uh, we see where they go from each screen, the flow, if they have drop-offs, if they have crashes related to that screen. Flow is very important. Understanding, you know, out of X number of people that started on screen one, did they make it to screen two, screen three? Did they make it to the eventual goal of completing uh, the transaction? All of that very important usage information is really gold for the app owner. They need to continually improve uh, the application. And in order to do that, they need to be able to read the mind of their users, understanding how they're using the application and how to improve uh, user performance. We see the uh, you know, transactions laid out. I showed you the shop view products transaction, uh, you know, details on individual transactions, which ones are slow, so you can map that all out. You can individual custom metrics. Uh, for example, I was capturing the shopping cart during the time of crash. That tells me that X amount of revenue was lost because of the application crash. Uh, that wasn't something that was measured out of the box, uh, but it was very easy for me to add that custom metric to be able to be tracked uh, by the system. I may want to compare one version of the system over another or one operating system over another. Very easy to do. We can go ahead and create multiple filters. We can say, you know, show me my ticket change application, which version uh, on maybe a specific platform, just iOS, just Android, um, a specific version of that uh, operating system, a specific manufacturer. Uh, using a specific network, you see that you can really slice and dice the data to get valuable information out of this. That's that compare feature. Now, from an application perspective, how easy is it to tool uh, the applications or to uh, enable AXA or App Experience Analytics? Uh, very, very easy. Um, simply go in here, say you have a new application, um, and when you pick your application, you say, okay, um, depending on which, you know, is it Android, is it iOS, is it watchOS? Understanding the transition between uh, your wearables 
to your phone back to your wearables, that's key. And you can see that uh, with AXA. It'll show you that you know the users did these features on the actual watch, and they used these functions uh, on the uh, device itself. So that switch back and forth between the platforms is key to know where, obviously, to develop your resources uh, and spend your money. Uh, or from a web perspective. So from an Android perspective, you can actually just take an existing app, you can upload it, and we return a wrapped app that has all of this information and starts collecting information. iOS perspective, a simple integration of a framework, it's a six step process, uh, and that application will then be reporting analytics. Watch uh, OS, very much similar to obviously the iOS integration, and then from a web perspective, simply taking the snippet and including it in the uh, home page uh, where your application, your web application loads, will start the collection of this information. From a profile perspective, all this stuff is dynamic. And so that's the nice thing. If you want to start collecting um, individual screenshots or you want to start collecting um, performance related issues, you can turn all these on or off dynamically. Uh, and uh, when you make the change, the next time the application connects, it gets an updated what we call application profile. So very important to be dynamic here as well. Obviously, you can set all the alerts you want uh, based on you know very uh, minute, uh, you know granular uh, details as far as how to set those alerts. Uh, this is uh, what I get real excited about because this is actually taking the power of what we're collecting and providing true business insights. This is what we call Data Studio. Uh, we are actually uh, storing the information in a data lake that is an, an open standard. We're using Elasticsearch and some of the um, Elasticsearch components, such as Kibana, to be able to get real business insights uh, from this data. For example, we have a number of what we call blueprints, or predefined dashboards. Let's look at one of these. Let's look at uh, session details from a omni-channel view, which means from you know, multiple different devices, uh, multiple different entry points. And let's go ahead and change it from last seven days. Let's go ahead and do uh, last 30 days. Now I see all of this information based on the last 30 days of information. And I can look at individual sessions. For example, maybe I want to look at a specific platform. So I only want to look at Android. So I can actually just click on that and instantly uh, new filters are applied. And I can subtract these filters, add these filters, but I have the ability to interact with the data very, very dynamically. Now maybe this dashboard isn't what you want, or maybe you have uh, someone in your organization that cares about one specific thing. All they care about is um, where to invest my browser resources so that I have the best user experience. Well, guess what? We make it very easy for you to create your own visualization with this data. We've made it very, very open for you. So let's go ahead and create a pie chart. And let's create a new search, and let's use um, one of the predefined um, page searches. So here's all of my sessions. So we have a total count of sessions, which is 1,500 sessions. Now I want to go ahead and separate out those sessions um, via, let's go ahead and use um, browser type. So if I go in here, and now you see all these fields. We're not hiding anything. Everything is available, that entire data lake. A collection of data is available. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, browser type raw. And let me just increase this to 15. I don't know how many browsers we have in the test environment here. But I'm going to go ahead and play this. Now you see a pie chart very quickly of, of those 1,500 sessions. Um, which platform is being used the most? Well, looks like I'm going to invest my resources in Chrome because 98% of the folks accessing uh, my application are using Chrome, a uh, very small percentage using Firefox, and even smaller uh, using Safari. This is really the power of business insights. Now we're going to expand on this in coming releases, but what we want to do is provide you true business insights uh, so that you can understand where to make investments, where they're going to pay off, where you need to change things. And this is really the power uh, of analytics. Collecting all the information is great, but being able to leverage it and make true sound business decisions is going to help uh, your organization. All right, I hope this uh, demonstration was valuable for you. I uh, wanted to show and hit on some of the key uh, points of App Experience Analytics. It is really focused around helping you initially develop and continually maintain a five-star application experience for your customers.